especially in the fields of health, transport, and communications. Speaking about the United Nations, he emphasizes that it is the only means of holding the world together. Well, thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you. All right, welcome back. And that was the uh, special do documentary we brought to you right from our archive at the time when uh, Sir Abu Bakr Tafa Balewa, the then Prime Minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria in those good old days when he visited the United States of America, uh, in those early days, and we saw the very rouse welcome that Abu Bakr Tafa got as the Prime Minister, so much that he even was given the honor to address the uh, House of Representatives. And I was saying that I can't remember in any recent time any Nigerian president that has had so much honor as Nigeria had in those good old days. I'm now joined by His Royal Highness Alaji Muhammad S. Ali Rudanto uh, Kitoro for the Emir of Bogu Kingdom in Niger State. You are here. Thank you for joining us on the program, sir. Thank you, Tunde. It's a pleasure having you here. Uh, we do appreciate that as a guest to the United Kingdom, the route could be very unfamiliar sometimes. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I know if this were to be Nigeria, you had a one million escort clearing the road for you, but sometimes it doesn't happen like that in this part of the So you were stuck mm -hmm. on the road. But we're very happy to still have you join us on the program. Mm -hmm. Very you. happy to still have you join us. Thank you. Very You're welcome. Uh, before you came in, we were looking at still looking at Nigeria 57, we're showing our views, uh, what Nigeria has gone through in those beautiful old days that the former Prime Minister of Nigeria, Sir Balewa, was welcomed uh, by the airport, by the Vice President of the United States of America, even had the honor to address the, the United States as a representative. It is one of the finest, the best, and uh, most powerful houses in the world. 57 years down the line, Amy Asa, how well has Nigeria done? Well, thank you, Tunde. Thank you very much for this opportunity given to me. You're welcome. To uh, actually talk on how far Nigeria has gone and uh, what are our expectations. Yes. Yeah. You know, in those days, uh, as we have shown, uh, well, when the then Prime Minister, Tafabulewa, was received, by the Vice President of the uh, United Na uh, States. You know, then a lot of things, uh, Nigerians at that time were so committed and dedicated to the cause of Nigeria. Mm. And the, the leaders at that time to believe in what is Nigeria and believe in their people and they believe in the service to the people. Mm. So, and uh, every Nigerian at that time has confidence in their leaders. Mm. And even the world is seeing Nigeria as a state in uh, um, one of the countries in Africa or a giant of Africa at that time. So we had all the respect given to our leaders, even to Nigerians at that time. And because uh, the leadership or the people who are our leaders then believe in service delivery. They don't believe in uh, what what we presently call uh, uh, that two cause of what we are looking at as corruption now. You know, then the issue of corruption was was to the barest minimum. But you know, nowadays, you know, what is just let me borrow from the words of the present president when he was ca campaigning that if we don't kill corruption, corruption will kill Nigeria. So at that time, the issue of corruption was not there. Even if it was, people believed that actually they have to serve the people, they have to serve the country. Mm -hmm. So and that gave us credibility outside, to make people have respect for our, our leaders, and have respect for our, our nation. And Africans at that time believed Nigeria was uh, the, 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 the biggest country in Africa, and they look on to Nigeria at that time. But unfortunately, as time goes on, went on, uh, we the, the whole thing changed. And that time again, 
every section of the country has what it takes to, to develop the country. The northern part was mainly on agriculture. The southern part, uh, southwest, you can remember the cocoa days, the, the north, the gran granite pyramids, and uh, we were not so dependent on oil. So when the oil came, everybody abandoned what God has given us. And that is what brought about all these problems we are facing now. But I think uh, we are going back to the roots. But, 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 uh, uh, you hear me, sir, before we, we talk about the way forward, let, let's, 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 let's play a little bit around, let me look, let's take a few minutes, let's play a little bit about what, how things quickly changed, how things quickly degenerated for Nigeria and for Nigerians. At that time, there were so much expectations on Nigeria. Yeah. The world was looking up yes. to Nigeria. At what point did things start changing dramatically bad for Nigeria? Well, uh, let me say, you know, I said earlier on that uh, every section of the country has what it takes to... In at, at that time, we were operating the regional system regional of government. System, yes. And uh, our leaders were so committed mm. then to the course of Nigeria itself. And then... Uh, after the Civil War, you know, the issue of this oil boom came and uh, we, instead of using the opportunity we have gotten from the oil boom to develop ourselves, we felt that we have gotten the oil and we don't even know what to do with the oil. So we started spending our money not even thinking of the future that we have to invest in this using the, these resources to invest for the future of this country. So at that time, everybody felt relaxed and everything went the way it went. And from that time, we started having problems. And we started to have changes in government. There was no stability in policy of government because from one uh, administration, military, military, military intervention. Cool. And that was the beginning of the whole problem. From one government to another, a government would barely spend six months in the militarized regime. After that six months, another regime came, just like that. So the changes in government made uh, us to, I mean, this is one of the causes of uh, our problems here now. And because there was no stability, there was in policy and other aspects of uh, the, the governance. So I think that is... Fr fr from, fr from the time you, you spoke, uh, when Nigeria was having the regional system of government where in the north, we had the Coco Pyramid. Yes. The north was making money for the, itself. The Granite Pyramid. The, I mean, sorry, yes. the Granite Pyramid. Yeah, yeah. The north making money for itself. The southwest had mm. the Coco yes. uh, making money for itself. Mm. Every region developing itself and going at its own pace. Yes. All of a sudden, power shifted from the region to the central. Yeah. Would you think that drastic? structure of Nigeria that changed had an impact on self-confidence of the people at the different times? That was, uh, that, uh, in my own opinion, that's not the, uh, the, 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 the main cause of that. You see, I told you, our leaders then, every one of them believe that they have to contribute their quota to this country. And even when there, there was regional administration, there was still a central government. Mm. Yeah. Everybody on the, from every region was contributing to the Central development force. of Nigeria but there was in no the center. Much, as much power yes. with the center with the center yeah. at that time yes. as we have it now. People were not rushing to be at the center. Yeah, it all boils down on the belief or, or, or uh, in, in what you want to do. You understand the fact that the center was not so powerful does not mean there was no center. Mm. There was center and every part of the country was contributing to the center. And all these things we're having was, in, in, I mean, uh, improved our economy because every one of them was, I mean, uh, uh, contributing to the economy and we have foreign exchange. We take out, out all these products outside and we get money to the, uh, to the country. But at the point I told you, 
that when the, the issue of the oil became, everybody abandoned what we used to have and concentrated on the oil. So we started having problems. What's, so what's, I, I, what's, I don't believe that it was because of the regional something and the center was weak. No. It was uh, 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 because people have abandoned what we used to have. Hmm. Yes. So when the oil boom came, yeah. national interest disappeared yes. and personal, personal interest, interest came, in. came in. Yes. So, you, so everybody was view. now believing that since the oil is there and it's bringing a lot, we have abandoned this and the, the center is there now. So they let everybody go to the center and make up something. So the, the issue of commitment uh, uh, has, has reduced in service. So in your view, you, th you think oil was more of a curse than a blessing? Anyway, it's not a curse because it is a, a, a natural a gift. gift from God. It is, we are the problems because we abandoned others for this. It would have been an added advantage. The North has this, the, the, the Southwest has cocoa and other these agricultural products. And this one is also to complement others so that Nigeria will grow. But uh, we felt that no, this oil now has come and uh, everybody has to go for it. So T Today, Nigeria has gone through several phases yeah. of national development. Some will say Nigeria has not developed from after the time of Sabu Bakar Tafa Balawa when we saw in that clip. Today we've got people calling for the his regional agitation. We have the Odua agitating. We have the um, Southeast Epop agitating for Biafra State. We have the North saying, the Arewa saying, look guys, look you want to go then you can go let everybody go giving ultimatum mm -hmm. to certain people we have corruption on the other side mm -hmm. we have recession dealing with nigerians nigeria has gone through a lot of challenges like, can we begin to unpeak these challenges and how we can get out of it say for instance the issue of the clamor or agitation for regional um for regional agitation from the southwest to the southeast, even to the north itself. How well do we address I, no, this? No, I don't think, I, mean, I will not be part of, uh, I will not succumb to that. Because it's just like regional, we, we are moving forward. It's just that we need to address, we need to understand our problems and address it. Have we been able to, un has Nigeria or the leadership of Nigeria understood the problem of the country? Have we? Of course. With the present leadership or what? No, d from the time yes. after those good mm. old days. Yes. F let's say from the time, um, um, let's say from 1979 up till the present, um, from the time of the first coming in of uh, President Olusegun mm -hmm. as a yes. military head of state. From that time till moment, because from that time, even from 1979, 1980, Nigeria still has some good time. Yes. And then things began to change mm -hmm. drastically from Shagari, uh, President Shagari's time when uh, a minister said, we have got so much money now, we don't even know what to do with our money now. So that's uh, because we have a misplaced of priority. And I told you. The cause, though you, uh, you asked me whether it's the oil is a cost, it's not a cost, but we made it as if it's a cost for Nigerians. We made it as if it's a cost. It's supposed to be an added advantage to what we have. The issue is that people are not committed. And unless we are committed just as our, like the former leaders whom we are, we are celebrating, then we cannot move forward. I think, that, do you understand what At I mean? How do yes. we get leaders, Nigerian leaders, to be committed? One, we ourselves have to believe in the course of Nigeria. The issue of agitation for 
uh, at a regional administration, it means we are drawing back ourselves. So we do you believe in restructuring of Nigeria? Do you think Nigeria as it stands is badly structured, that Nigeria should be restructured? Anyway, we have uh, restructuring. Uh, I mean, people have um, called for, yes. I mean, you do know, you are yes, a lawyer yes, by yes, training yes, and by profession, yes, yeah. and you are a barrister. Yes. yes. Thank God you are an EMEA today, yes. but you got awesome background and yes. training. Mm. As a lawyer, as a barrister, yes. do you believe in this call for restructuring of Nigeria? People say, as Nigeria stands, it's badly structured. Yes. Can we go back to the gold old days yes. when Nigeria has every region has power? Even if we can't return to those mm. old days, let us, let us do something about the current constitution. Yeah. That the current constitution is not very good. Do you believe that we should do something about the constitution? Well, we should, the, the, uh, of course, the constitution, the, there is need for amendments of the constitution. And in the course of amendment, the issue of restructuring will have to come in. We have to look at where, we, uh, we, uh, what's, wh where, do, where have we uh, gotten it wrong, and where do we need to put it, things together to get it right mm. for the country. So, uh, the issue of the restructuring, are, yes. The issue of restructuring is not limited to regionalism. The, the, to my, in my own opinion, it's not limited to regionalism, or it's not limited to going back to the old days. It's, it's, it's a call that we have to sit together, understand the differences. What is our problem? We look at the past and assess our presence. Then where do we need to go? We look at where are we supposed to be in the uh, affairs of the, the, uh, of the nation. Where are we supposed to be? So these are the things we are supposed to sit down and consider. It's not issue of IPOG. It's not issue of uh, anybody saying that we have to say still. Well, no, we have to come together. God has brought us together as a nation, and uh, he, if He so wish, would have given. Uh, I mean, uh, taking us apart differently. But God has brought us together. You, you remember if uh, it's a godly saying that uh, what God has joined together, no man should put asunder. You understand? Mm -hmm. So we, are, we have come a long way to, 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 to date. So my own call is that we should come together from different re regions. We sit down together, the northern, the southern, south, south, southwest, southeast, northwest, northeast, north center, everyone. We we'll come together and sit down. Now, where have we gotten it wrong? Let us look at our good old days and now see where are we now? Are we presently, we are known to be the giant of Africa. Are we really the giants of Africa today? If we are not, what is the cause of it? Mm. Then we sit down and address this issue. All right, uh, mm -hmm. let, me, uh, let me quickly take uh, the score. I've got call coming in. Good evening, David. Good evening, David. Hi, good evening. Yes, Despite thank you so much. My observation basically is, what role does His Excellency, His Royal Highness have? Does, does he believe that the traditional rulers have... We, we can barely hear you, David. We can barely... Or should the traditional rulers be outside the politics in order for them to minister traditionally to their people? Thank you. All right, okay. I, I think I got a bit of that, the role of... Tra do Should traditional rulers play any role? In national development, and if they should, what role should they play in national development? Well, um, well, yeah, let me even go back before answering this question. The good old the days, the good old days, days, where traditional rulers are, uh, I mean, have natural roles they play before the coming of the uh, this issue of democracy, to politicians, have politicians, to, uh, and who have taken away the roles of the. Pre uh, uh, traditional rulers. Uh, then, you uh, see any problem you have, you go to the traditional rulers. If a traditional ruler speaks, and it's issue, as, if God has spoken. It's as if God has spoken. But now, you can see that the way it, the whole thing is structured, and traditional rulers are placed at the background. If we invite, but you know, in a, a way of protocol now, when before they mention a traditional ruler, they mention the whole, if, uh, up to the counselor, before you now mention a traditional ruler. And when pro tro I mean problem comes, you go back to the traditional because he was he is the one that will speak to the people and they will listen to him. 
So if, if we are talking of restructuring is part of the things we have to sit down and discuss and look at the rule. Where do we place the traditional rulers? Of course, traditional rulers should be given a role. Though uh, I will not say they should go into policy, but advisory roles should be given to traditional institutions. They should be well recognized so that in the scheme of things, they'll be able to address issues that are of paramount concern. In the past, we have seen situations where politicians or even head of states have used traditional laws to their own interests. You remember the Abasha days, the um, Babangida days, when traditionalists uh, moved en masse to Asorok, giving bills of Nigeria notes in order to manipulate their people to suit the interest of the leaders. Have traditionalists themselves placed themselves in a respectable position that will warrant them being given a constitutional responsibility, bearing in mind that they have made sub, sub, sub themselves in the past subjects of manipulation. Well, uh, this should be a statement. Uh, uh, as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> I don't think uh, it's, it's just, uh, let me say, speculations. That's fine. I am, because I don't have evidence to prove what you have said now. So I don't think... Uh, but we've seen the Abasha mm. days where he spoke about how traditionalists were invited to Asura, gave him money. He's, who spoke about that? Abacha yeah, said it? In Has those he substantiated it? But, but your, your Highness, mm. are you saying traditionalists mm. have not in the past been used to manipulate their people yeah. by leaders in the country? You mean traditional rulers as an uh, uh, individuals as individuals yes. well we cannot in as individuals everybody is uh, having his own uh, way if you say collectively then i would have agreed that okay if it is collective and it was done collectively then you can lead that accusation. but individuals we have every every individual has his own way of thinking his own thing okay because of yes. our time let's quickly move forward the next 57 years what do you advise nigeria to do Anyway, I wouldn't say without going back to this present administration. I would have because I want people to look at this present administration. If that has come to address these problems we are talking about. One, the present administration, they believe in the leader of this uh, the, the present administration, that is the present president. President Mahmoud Yes, Bahadur. everybody knows he's not a corrupt person. You may accuse some people yes, that uh, maybe close that or whatsoever, but everybody knows that he is not a corrupt person. So I want to use this opportunity to call on Nigerians to believe in him, to believe that we can turn things around with him. All we need to do, forget about politics, we come together as Nigerians. Give him the support. Forget about whether he, uh, uh, he's from one party or the other. No, we're not. he's the president of Nigeria. And all we need is to make Nigeria great again. And he's got the and capacity? He has, yes, of course he has the capacity. And that is because he has the capacity. That's why Nigerians decided to vote him. It's not easy at all when he came in. And uh, people should not expect that uh, uh, some things that have been bad for many years we just suddenly within one two three years will be turned around so a lot of things we have to uh, considerations have to this all we need to do is to believe in him and by the grace of god things will change for the better in nigeria all right awesome and let me use the opportunity again to call upon because i'm in the uk now to call upon the, the nigerians in diaspora to come together come and join and support this administration not on party grounds, but support national the president for the national development. Let them come home and invest in Nigeria. All right, thank you yes. very much, sir. Because of our time, I've been talking with His Royal Highness Elijah Muhammad S. Aleru, 
down to uh, the Emir of Bogu Kingdom in Niger State. It's a pleasure, Your Thank Royal you. Highness, having Thank you here live Thank you in London. Thank, Thank you so much. You My name is Tuja Labi. Uh, let's go back, uh, return to our other program. See you again. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank Bye. you, Tundi. Thank you very much.